Hello, in this video, I'm going to be talking about allostatic load. What is it? How do you measure it? Why does it matter? And how does it relate to breast cancer? Before I go on, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We put out content multiple times a week, so there's always something new to watch. Allostatic load is sort of the opposite of homeostasis. Homeostasis is when we are in harmony, when everything is in balance. And this can be both physiologic in terms of how your body works and also how we are in the world. So when we're in homeostasis, everything's sort of aligned and everything's in the middle. We're not too happy or too sad. We're not too hot, too cold. We don't have too much water. We're not too dry. We're right where we should be, sort of like Goldilocks and the just right temperature for the oatmeal, the just right chair, the just right bed. Allostatic load is when we're pushed out of balance and allo is from the Greek meaning other. So something from the outside is causing us wear and tear. Allostatic load is often referred to as wear and tear on the body. Allostatic load is something to which we can be exposed when we are in utero, when we're not before we're even born, when we're very small, in terms of our early life conditions, as we grow up in adolescence, when we encounter stresses in school, not all stress is bad. We need stress to be able to grow and function and perform. But what we're talking about here is outsized stress, outsized stress, stress that overwhelms our ability to manage. And we know that allostatic load is not evenly distributed across populations. So people who have less wealth are much more likely to experience allostatic load on their bodies, not knowing where your next meal is coming from, being worried about being able to pay the rent, not being able to get to your job because you don't have a reliable vehicle or reliable public transportation. These are things that wear and tear on our body. Similarly, noise pollution, light pollution, um, blight, being in areas where we don't feel safe. All of these things contribute to allostatic load. If our family isn't safe, this increases allostatic load. So I want to talk about allostatic load and our health. It looks as though allostatic load is associated with a whole host of things, including behaviors, including smoking. People who live in segregated areas where there's more concentrated poverty are more likely to smoke. So we might view smoking as a behavior, a choice that somebody makes, but when that choice is more common in certain areas, you can see it as much as an exposure as you can an individual behavior. We also know that allostatic load is increased with obesity. So people who live in segregated areas where there's greater wear and tear on the body are more likely to be obese. This is not due exclusively to behaviors, amount eaten, and choices made about food. It's also an area level exposure. It's not even availability of food. There's something about the way we handle stress that increases inflammation in the body and that can increase obesity. Obesity is considered an inflammatory condition. It does appear that people who are exposed to violence within the home have tumors that are more aggressive. So there's a study showing that people who are, uh, who've been subjected to domestic violence, intimate partner violence, have a higher likelihood of having triple negative breast cancer. Obviously not everybody with triple negative breast cancer has been exposed to domestic violence or intimate partner violence, but we do see these connections between allostatic load and tumor biology, not just in breast cancer, but in other cancers. This is an active area of research because if we can change the conditions under which people are born, play, learn, work, and age, that's easier to do than changing intrinsic biology of tumors, which we can't yet figure out how to modify. So how do we measure allostatic load? Well, different researchers measure allostatic load different ways. Some look at area level exposures, some people look at personal exposures. Some people will measure things like adverse childhood experiences. That's an often used scale. 
to look at the allostatic load to which people were exposed in childhood. And then there are some biomarkers of allostatic load as well. There are biomarkers like cortisol that can be measured and other markers of inflammation. These are all still under investigation and a very um, active area of research. I thought it would be worth sharing with you so you understand the work we're doing to understand the effects of place and other things that happen to people during their life and the development of breast cancer. Are there things you can do to decrease your allostatic load? Well, we can't go back in time. We can't change the things to which you were exposed. And there's some thought that being able to handle stress and developing a resilience to stress can help you. There are some medications like beta blockers that we give for heart conditions that may actually decrease the risk of recurrence. This is still under active research but those may just um, soften the fight or flight feeling we get when we're exposed to stress. It is really hard to change the conditions under which you live. So I would say this is one thing for which you should not feel responsible. These are decisions at the policy and political level and um, you know, distribution of power in our societies. So these are not necessarily things you can change. But these are active areas to think about when we think about policy and what, what policies should be moved forward as we think about the general health of the population. So to go back to, can you change your allostatic load? It's not really likely at the individual level you can. And while stress reduction is good for all sorts of things, it probably won't alter tumor biology. We have no proof that you need to meditate or use aromatherapy to improve your outcome. It will improve your quality of life if you're up for those sorts of things. I hope this has been interesting for you. Drop a comment or a question below. And thank you again for watching.